you're back and so am i like it or not we're stuck together on the coolest ship on the internet the gaming galleon i'm captain raz and uh man it's been a long seven days a long boring anticipation filled seven days waiting to get back on this ship you know what i'm saying all right we got a lot going on today uh, today we're going to be talking about one of the most exciting things to happen uh, here at the old Y&L home port. Uh, we're also going to be playing Strikers 1940 Effing 5. This is a great game from a great genre that I have not been able to um, really explore yet. We haven't really been able to sail these waters because you see Strikers 1945 is in no way for the faint of heart, okay? It is what we like to call a shooter. Notice I'm using the term shooter, not shoot him up, not shmup, okay? Get him out of here. It's a shooter, and we're going to be playing it, okay? Uh, we're also going to have a, uh, a booty segment that's, that's filled to the gills, okay? Uh, I, I, I can't even close this thing. And uh, then we're, we're going to have the mailbag right down there, okay? All right, so let's talk about um, a phenomenon that's been going on over, across the country, okay? Uh, this all started about nine months ago. I walked into a video game store. I was ringing up for some games. And on my way out, I saw on a bulletin board this small flyer that said, Tappers, opening soon in Indianapolis, the first barcade here in the city and you may ask yourself what in god's name is a barcade well it's just one step shy of shangri-la my friends it's basically an arcade that serves beer and normally pretty good beer okay we're not talking domestics here okay and we're not talking uh, golden tea and dave and busters kind of games okay we're talking about games from the golden age, okay? Because if anyone is going to take the time and effort to create a barcade, they're going to do it right, okay? So I was very intrigued. I heard about this in other cities, but I didn't know there was one coming here. Flash forward about three months later, and uh, me and the Yesterday Night Live boys get together and decide, you know what? Maybe we should hit the internet. And it all started there. Okay, because we had our first show all on the couch together. If you didn't know, we do a second, I do a sh I'm on a show here at uh, our home port, Yesterday Night Live, uh, at uh, Port Bismuth. And we all sit down, I, uh, I let my sea legs rest a little bit, sit down with the guys. We talk video games live every Wednesday, okay? And then you and I, the next day, we go and sail the seas on Thursdays, okay? So anyway, we all sat down together, our first time, this is before we even got the ship, and we were just discussing video games, and the, the, the subject of barcades came up. And I believe I brought up the fact that there was a local barcade opening here, and this was news to everyone. Well, old Admiral Will, uh, he's not a dull, or he's not a, a dim guy. He, uh, he likes to latch on to stuff that he thinks may be uh, adventurous or, or, you know, interesting to explore and he got these guys on the phone the very next weekend okay and they started talking now uh tappers is yet to uh at the time tappers was not open and it, you had not found a location yet uh what was interesting though was they had a kickstarter plan and uh, what a kickstarter is crowdfunding is you can put an idea up on on the internet and if people think that's a good idea they can invest in it so to speak, or donate money in an effort to make that happen. So there were enough people here in Indianapolis who thought, wow, Barcade here in town, that would be awesome. And these guys managed to, to, um, to coop, coop, collect a sizable amount, about $30,000 for their initial investment. So that's pretty crazy. So obviously we wanted to get involved with these guys. We wanted to learn more about their story. And since they didn't have a Barcade yet, uh, we just kept in, in, in communication. Well, fast forward six months down the line, 
and Will comes over to the old captain's pad on a Saturday night and says, Okay, Rez, in three days, the boys of Tappers are going to be showing up at Port Bismuth, and uh, we're going to be interviewing them live. And I'm like, are you serious? He's like, yeah. He's like, well, it sounds great, but have you seen Port Bismuth? He's like, yeah. I'm like, do you really want guests in there? He's like, well, we're going to have to do some work. And and I instantly uh, wanted to, like, you know, see him off to the door. But I didn't. Uh, he's like, you know, it's going to take some work. And I said, all right, all right, all right. Well, we'll, we'll work it out. What are we going to do? I mean, we usually sit on those couches. Uh, you know, what are we going to do? And I happen to have a bar-style bar table in my kitchen. So it's like, what do you say we bring the table? So he's like, okay, that's a good idea. We've got some bar stools. And I said... And what do you say we, we buy them around? You know, that we are talking about bars and video games here. And, uh, you know, it would be nice to have a beer and maybe some video games around. He's like, yeah, well, okay, sure. We certainly got the video games covered. Uh, you, know, what, you know, and I said, well, what kind of beer? And he's like, well, let's do something local. We'll do Sun King. Okay, so that was the plan. The plan was come back to Port Bismuth, make it presentable, okay? So, uh, scrape the algae off the walls, you know, shoo all the rats out. And uh, make this place presentable enough so we could have some people over. How are we doing on time? Late as usual, huh? What are you going to do? Uh, so anyway, that was the plan. We had three days, okay? Now, I was nervous. Uh, I was nervous because we hadn't done one of these interviews before. I knew we were going to be going out at 50 minutes. Uh, the plan was, you know, there are probably only going to be about two of them coming, and it would probably be best if we only had two of us interviewing. Will decided it should be French, because uh, the French Revolution, he hosts the, the Yesterday Night Live uh, podcast, and then myself, because he thought that maybe we would have some common ground, myself and these gentlemen, they're a little older like me, and we grew up in the arcade age, so obviously I would speak their language a little better, you know, than, than say, French, who didn't grow up during that era. So that was the plan. The four of us would sit down, have some beers, sans French, he's, he's not of age, and uh, just chat. But I was still a little nervous. I mean, I, I believe it or not, I am a little standoffish when it comes to people I don't know. Uh, I, I, I put up a big act, but I usually am constantly trying to leave on a joke. And what I mean by leave on a joke is keep them laughing, and then when they laugh, make an exit, okay? I don't know why, that's just how I've always been. Uh, obviously, I end up warming up to people eventually. And most of the time, people are not the wiser. And I think the YNL guys knew that because I was like, oh my God, I, I'm really nervous. I don't know what to say to these guys. And they're like, you know, Raz, you got it covered, okay? Just calm down. Like, they were fine. Everyone else on YNL seemed to have no problem with the fact this was happening. I seemed to be the only one who was uh, worried, okay? So anyway, uh, the day of the event happens, and the plan is, uh, the day before, Bismuth, uh, First Mate Bismuth stopped by uh, my pad, and we loaded this bar table into um, the van I have, okay? And we're going to transport it here. And on Monday, Will and I, everybody showed up on Monday, and we all tried to clean this place up as best I can. Others more than other, uh, some more than others. I have to admit, I spent most of my time helping out by playing uh, Sega Genesis games. But hey, you know somebody's got to keep us on the air, right? So anyway, uh, Tuesday, Fizz came over. We uh, we popped the the table in the van, played some video games, and then the plan was that I, I work morning. So after that, head on over straight here to the studio and set the table up okay now around 12 30 which is about where i'm getting off um abra will texted me and he's like you know what's up and i said hey i'm you know i'm on i'm on my way to the studio he's like okay cool now the studio the studio the port is uh east east part of the city, east part of Indianapolis, and I got out of work, and I, I was ready to take a right, which would take me to the highway, to the east side of town, and then I took a left, 
And I was like, you know, I sure haven't been to that uh, that video game store up north in for a while. I wonder what's going on up there. And uh, of course, the sensible side of my head is like, are you out of your mind? You just had Gen Con. Uh, you know, you're still, uh, you know, you're still trying to catch up. So first of all, you don't really have that that much player on money. Second of all, Will is waiting for what could possibly be the most important day that we have had here at Yesterday Night Live yet. He's waiting, and he's waiting for, you know, arguably the centerpiece of the entire thing. The, the stupid table that's sitting in the back of my van, okay? And yet, off we go in the total opposite direction to a video game store <laughs> that I hadn't been at a while. Uh, you know, now I think about it, I might as well show you the games. I didn't get much. This place is pretty rough. Okay, this place isn't screwing around. Sometimes I see things falling through the cracks here, but not often. Uh, hold on. What do we got here? We got this guy. And we got, uh, we got this guy. Here we go. I, I no way really got these for a good deal. Uh, I got them mainly because I don't see them often. Well, if it's an Atari game and it's a dollar, I'm going to get it. This is uh, Shark Attack. Okay, this was a dollar. And look at the box art there. You got a shark there. You know, a scuba diver. I mean, how can you go wrong? You know? Uh, I got this thing. Uh, it had a price tag on it. I peeled out the price tag and this whole front label fell off. <laughs> so I had to get Biz to, to glue that back on. So thanks, Biz. So that guy's good. And then we also got a game that we're definitely going to be sailing off to uh, at some point. Probably sooner rather than later, frankly. Because it's too awesome. Uh, this is called Red Star. I'm told for PlayStation 2. I'm told that this is, uh, there you go. I'm told that this is based off of a graphic novel, uh, alternate USSR kind of stuff, but what we're interested in is this is a cross between a shooter and a beat-em-up, okay? I mean, come on. A cross between R-Type and Final Fight? Incredible. And we played a little bit live already yesterday. Couldn't have been happier with it. So we'll sail those waters again sometime in the future. Uh, so those were what I picked up. I must have spent like an hour at this place. All right, maybe a half hour. I think I was pretty good. But we're still like, what, five hours away from the interview or so? And, you know, no, who knows what's going on over here, um, whatever. So I finally make my way here. We get the table in. Biz is here. Will is here. The three of us set the table up. Uh, you know, Will's doing checks with the, with the equipment and whatnot. And, um, you know, I'm still nervous. I, the whole time I'm like, when is French going to get here? Because he's running the show here. You know, I may be here for color, and maybe I could speak these guys' language, but I'm still a little freaked. Is it really that late? Yeah! All right, we'll wrap it, basically. These guys came over. They were real champs. Uh, this is Jeff and Aaron. They're running this awesome bar, uh, or trying to. They're not out yet. Sounds like they're going to be here late uh, in the, uh, the year. If you want to check it out, you can check it out on our, uh, our YouTube page and also um, our, our Twitch page. Uh, just Anyway, you'll find it. Uh, look for Tappers. Great guys. Uh, we did the interview, talked to them for about 50 minutes, and then we all sat down. We played some great games. We played some Street Fighter. We played, um, played Wizard of War. I mean, we, we played some good stuff. What was the first one we played? Uh, Joust. You know, uh, it was a great time. We had some beers, had some laughs. Uh, really nice guys. And um, all, all of my nerves, as usual, were for naught. It, it, everything came out fine, and I think they had a really good time and, and felt very welcome here. So, Aaron, Jeff, once again, thank you for, uh, for coming by and uh, making this place a little brighter and a little more legit. And uh, we can't wait to, to walk in the door of uh, Tappers and uh, see all the adventures you have waiting for us there inside and did i mention that there's no cover for this place you can go in there and play video games and uh you know get a beer but you know there's no guy at the door waiting to kick you out sounds like a crazy awesome time okay so in honor of uh, the boys at tappers uh aaron mentioned that he's a shooter fan and, and he said he had a, they have a neo geo machine i don't know if you know what a neo geo machine is but it's basically a cabinet uh, that you could 
And believe it or not, you could play arcade games by popping it into the arcade, the, the, the cartridge into the arcade machine. You could take the very same arcade uh, cart and bring it home and pop it into another one. And that was unheard of at this time. Uh, these carts, Neo Geo carts, costed like hundreds of dollars even back then. So obviously this was a high-end system, and uh, guys like me only played Neo Geo in the arcade. But I loved it. Great system, a lot of good fighting games, a lot of good shooters. And when I asked him, he, you know, his favorite genre, he says, really into shooters. I said, do you have any, are there going to be there any at the arcade? He said, we, we do have one for the Neo Geo that I really like called Strikers 1945. And my ears perked up because not only do I really like that game, but we had, okay? We got it for the PlayStation 1. Obviously, it's, it's a fraction of what the Neo Geo version uh, would be would uh, cost, but the fun factor is in no way fractioned. It's still incredible on the PS1. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to play the first shooter we ever played here on the Galleon. Uh, we're going to be sailing out to Berlin. Uh, I mean, hopefully the hold the hull the hull holds because there's a lot of fire going on out there. I'm pretty sure what we're going to do is we're just going to pull up to safe waters. Um, I'm I'm sure that I think that's what the navigator set to. I hope. Um, pull us up to safe waters, and then we will get into uh, the the Sinjin, I believe, is the the plane that we are uh, we're piloting today. Okay, don't quote me on that. I think it's the Sinjin, the Sinjin. Uh, but anyway, it's green. Part of the reason I picked it, and uh, also I think it's got some other planes backing it up. And uh, trust me, with the kind of shot I am, I'm going to need it. So anyway, oh, and also, not screwing around here. Look at that. That's what we're playing with today. Oh yeah, sticking buttons, baby, sticking buttons. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, this is 1945 for the PlayStation One. Uh, no manual, but I do have a case. There's, you know, nothing to write home about. Whatever. Um, let's get started. Let's get started with this bad boy. Okay, 1945 for the PlayStation One on the PlayStation Three. Because remember, these things are backward compatible, okay? Oh man, listen to that audio! Woo! Mama! That's gonna be big, bad, and burly! You know what I'm saying? If I'm yelling, I don't know what to tell you. Let's get started, baby. Oh! I don't know how, frankly, I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to talk. Uh, when you're talking about, you know, I mean, look at how much is going on. Isn't that enough? Ah! Oh, dude, I suck. All right. I mean, I, dude, I have no idea if we're going to be able to fill half an hour with the gameplay. It's probably a good thing that I went on and on about uh, the boys' attackers. Because, dude, I had to fill somehow. Uh, I mean, we're also lucky that the, uh, oh, my God, that the, uh, the booty chest is, is pretty full. I'm really hoping uh, that we'll be able to fill. Okay. Now what I'm doing here is I can, I can hold down the button and, and that second more powerful attack. I got three buttons here. We got rapid fire and then we got the, our big move. Bring it on boys! Go get him! And that I can only do a few times. You know, this is typical shooter stuff. Oh, come on, dude. How many lives do I have left? I'll tell you what. I didn't even... Oh, thank God. All right, so that's the first level. I sure hope you guys can hear me. I'll tell you what. My headphones are rocking. They are rocking. Oh, take a seat. I'm pretty sure that you guys are going to be, be fine hearing me. I mean, is it ever a problem to hear me? I, I sincerely doubt it. And I'm so I'm so full of adrenaline right now from playing a shmup. Not to say I'm good at these, but God, I can't get enough of them. Uh, Aaron and I were talking, Aaron and I from, uh, from Tappers were talking about this last night. You know, we're at the, 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 the age where we don't really invest, we can't be that invested in RPGs anymore. Um, 
I, I do love, I do know some great action RPGs, open action RPGs out there. But it's hard to get investment because of all the minutia involved. You're constantly having to stop at a store. You're constantly having to unload your gear into your house. Uh, you know, go see an NPC, non-player character. And there's so much. There's so much parsley on the plate, if you will. And this is all meat. Okay, a shooting game is all meat. It's like one big nasty greasy pile of protein okay you turn it on and then the entire screen is filled with that big explosion i mean what happened here what happened to the aircraft carrier now i'm fighting a robot okay i don't know how it happened it doesn't matter how it happened if it matters it's just happening and we're here to experience it we're also here to experience my inevitable heart attack. Take him down, baby! Got it. Oh my god. My throat's already torn. <laughs> my throat's already torn to pieces. Alright, I really don't expect to go that long. I mean, really, I think I may have three continues. I'm relatively sure I'm on my last life already. Oh god, no! Okay, I have one more life. And you see there's a gauge down there. I believe that's if you hold down one button, that thing happens. And I think the more this, uh, this ghost plane comes out. Now there's like four or five different planes. They all do something different. I picked the green one because I like green. And, uh, but I think the more that, that meter is built up, the cooler that, that hold down meter is. I could be wrong. I don't know. Get some gold here. Get some uh, some Nazi gold. Whoa, hello. This is called Strikers 1945. Uh, the story behind this is actually supposed to take place right after World War II. And peace, world peace is achieved, but then all of these high-level officers from around the world, all different countries affiliated with the war, band together to try to take it over. Oh god. This is not going well. I think I'm out of those, uh, that backup. Ouch. So, so that's the main plot here. So you're actually flying all over the world, kicking butt here. But, you know, this does take place in 45. I mean, look at these buildings here. You know, th if this isn't war-torn Berlin, I, I don't know what is. And, you know, that's great because I've never made it over to Germany. I'll tell you what. Could you imagine going to Oktoberfest? Could you imagine? I Here's the problem with me, though. Oh. I don't know if you know this about old Cap and Raz. I really like beer. Really enjoyed sitting down with the boys at Tappers and having a beer yesterday. But there's a problem. Uh, for me, beer is really good and always a good idea when I crack it open. But it is kind of my Achilles heel because I don't know why. Uh, but it is an absolute depressant for me. I, I, I get knocked out like nobody's business. Uh, drinking a beer. Oh, oh, oh! And that I was a little worried about. I was like, I mean, I, I was really sipping the beer in the interview. I didn't really want to hit a buzz. That's another thing. I have no tolerance. You know, two beers, and I'm, I'm really experiencing a bit of a buzz there. So... So I was a little worried about... Oh man, I'm getting rocked. I'm having to like, call in my reinforcements like every five seconds. Uh, but you know, I stayed awake. It was it was stirring conversation to say the least. You get me talking about video games and I mean, you may as well, you know, I don't know, give me like a, uh, give me like a dozen 50 sticks. I, I'm like, it, it like energizes me, you know? 
What was that? Oh, where am I? Oh, there I am. Okay. Oh, yeah, you only killed me five times. You see how bad I am at this? Alright, we'll go one more level here. And then uh, we'll hit the booty segment. Frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if this is my final continue. And if that's the case, we'll come back, we'll do the booty segment. There's a lot to, to talk about there. Uh, pretty awesome lot, if I do say so myself. And if I might add, this entire show... I, I should really say this coming up. Um, but uh, I'm on the subject now, so... This whole show today was re from the ground up in the past 24 hours. I had a whole other voyage planned. Uh, a whole other uh, country plotted. You know, it was in the Navigator. And then in 24 hours' time, boom. Everything changed. Our location changed. Our stories changed. Uh, the adventures that we had encountered the past 24 hours had changed dramatically. And, uh, and most importantly, our game had changed. So that's the thing about adventure. You never know when things are going to change. Oh, and you got to be that kind of person to, man, just roll with it. You know, don't ever get caught up in the details. Don't ever get caught up in the plan. Uh, when you're doing anything in life, be spontaneous, be crazy, you know. Throw some, uh, throw a big, nasty skeleton. What is this thing? Oh. What is it about shoot 'em ups that every, all these monsters always seem to have like eight or nine different uh, legs? Did I beat him? Alright. Let's do one more. I'm gonna play out this. I have a feeling I continue to be running out here. If not, then we'll just stop it here, and that's fine. What's that? In in the volcano? You ever think about the budget that these guys must have to make all these uh, all these spaceships and stuff? Models of mine. Oh god. I really threw a bomb there too. So is anybody like just just like oh? <laughs> All right, we'll come back. I'll uh, I'll save it here. All right, and let's uh, let's head on back. We'll take some more time with this later. This is uh, I mean I I I don't think I can ex tell you how um, you know the the unmitigated joy I'm having playing. I mean. It's mainly because these games are just so much fun and so easy to get into. And Strikers 1945 especially is is cool. I, I just think it's quality. I don't know. And there's like six different ships. There's something for everyone. And uh, if if the Shingrin the Shingrin goes down, we've got another ship uh, on standby just in case, for a little more death and destruction over on the other side of the pond in Berlin. Okay, but for now, remember how I told you that the past 24 hours had completely changed from what was planned uh, last afternoon, last night? I mean, it all started with tappers. It all started with meeting these fun guys and uh, really getting to learn about them. It all started with Aaron saying, Strikers 1945, and my ears perking up and thinking, you know, I've been trying to figure out a way to do a shooter on the Galleon. When's the right opportunity? That hit. And then, this morning, finding everything that we're seeing here. And yes, I know you're not seeing it. I'm being a jerk. But we're going to find out right now, okay? I found everything that we're about to see here in the time span of about an hour, okay? It did pretty good. So let's try and go in the order of how I found it. Uh, I walked into one place in the morning, and someone who was extremely congenial greeted me. Extremely, extremely congenial. Uh, congenial to the point where you realize she had much more invested in uh this um 
this this business than just your average hourly employee and she's like hello good morning nice to see you and i'm like thanks she's like what's your name and i'm like uh Raz? she's like oh okay i'm i'm amber i think it was amber and um what are you looking for today and i'm like uh you know i'm always looking for the same thing video games she's like oh okay and we're standing next to this table and there's always clearance stuff at these stores okay and they had a tupperware bin i don't know if i have one of the right size but it's the kind of tupperware bin that you would put your your christmas decorations in okay so i'm talking like you know that wide by you know that deep okay and it's filled overflowing filled with xbox 360 connects just the connects an entire tupperware filled with them okay and then there was a sign written in marker that said xbox connects 5.99 each <laughs> so like, and i don't have a single connect for the record there is no 360 on the hold okay i believe there's a couple floating around port bismuth but here in the Galleon, we don't have one, all right? There's nothing in, in the hold. A couple Xbox 360 games have found their way in the hold, but every system that's that's got made it onto this ship, for whatever reason, is busted. And that probably doesn't surprise you. I'm, I'm sure that's happened to you. So anyway, suffice it to say, I was less than excited about this Connects. And apparently, so was everyone else who came in here, because they had an entire Tupperware filled with them hilarious i wanted to take a picture but uh i i just i feel weird pulling my camera out in, in, in businesses so whatever uh so so basically i said no that's cool she's like okay well how about you know i'm like oh i don't have an xbox she's like oh we can sell you an xbox 360 I'm like yeah okay all right and so i walk over to the games the game rack that you know it's the same old crap it's always there but you never know taking a look and she approaches me a second time, and she's like, "So, sir, is so you're what else are you looking for?" I'm like, "Well, video games. Do you have any video games coming out today?" This is always a good thing to ask. Uh, you know, if you're looking for used video games, 99% of the time, a place you're going to be in doesn't have everything out on the shelves. Okay, don't be afraid to ask. You hear that a lot about garage sales, but that applies to stores as well. Okay. Things can change every 24 hours. Don't ever get in a comfort zone. Okay, ever, Always ask. So I said, hey, you got anything coming out? She's like, well, let me take a look for you, sir. And so she goes in the back, and she comes back with about seven games all, all wrapped up in cellophane like they're ready to sell today. And she's like, well, we, we only have these, sir. And five of them happen to be GameCube games. Oh, yes, indeed you do, okay? These are great games. Not only are they great games, but these go for a pretty penny, okay? I don't know what it was about Nintendo's GameCube. I felt like it was a popular system back then, but I think it's because the Wii's backward compatible. So if you think about it, GameCube games have been relevant for play to anyone with a Nintendo Wii or a GameCube for the past 13 years. It wasn't only until the Wii U showed up the GameCube games finally became obsolete or retro. It was up until the end of the Wii's lifespan that you could play GameCubes on a current generation system. So I think as a result of that, there was a large demand for that. It's not like PS2, um, where once the PS3 showed up, you couldn't play it on the, your current gen system. So I think that's got a lot to do with it. Plus it's a Nintendo, and plus the GameCube has a really good library, okay? So I think there were about five GameCube games here, and then there were like two Wii games that weren't that great. But I said, how much for the GameCube games? She asked the manager in the most congenial way possible, and uh, they, they settled on a dollar game. So let's take a look at what we got here. We did pretty good. Uh, this is Tech. Tech. Tech 2 and the Staff of Dreams. I, I've never played this guy. It's frankly a pretty common game on all systems. But for a buck... We'll go for it. Can I put the stupid flag down? I feel like Linus. There we go. 
Boom. Boom. Not screwing around. Very happy to find this. Uh, it's got the disc. No manual. The disc has probably seen better days, but I think it'll still run. I don't even know why I checked. it checked. It's not like you can never tell. It's not perfect, but I, it doesn't look like, it, you know, like it's not going to boot up on its own. And if it doesn't, we're talking a dollar a game here for Smash. You know, 250 or so, two more bucks, and we've got a, a, a nice copy going for us. So, man, awesome deal. Um, so, Sonic Battle Adventure 2. That sadly has Sonic Mega Collection in it. There you go. Which sucks because Battle 2 is a lot a lot more in demand than uh, Mega Collection. Which is funny because honestly Mega Collection is a better game. Because this is a compilation of like seven different Sonics. And when I'm talking about, I'm talking about like good Sonics. Like Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3. Uh, you know... Some of the other good ones are on here. And then I believe there's also some old Sega Genesis games unlockable on this. Like Flicky and Comic Zone and stuff. So it's a pretty decent compilation. But it's everywhere. I mean, I've passed on this game for a dollar before. But this being a lot, I just... And they were all buck each. I was like, I'll just take them all. Um, whatever. I mean, frankly, this case, this Sonic Adventure Battle 2 case... That's probably worth more than, than the, the Mega Collection disc, but whatever. Uh, what do we got? X-Men Legends 2. This is a four-player action RPG. Just got the, the disc. You know, used condition. No manual. Uh, this is an action RPG, and it is four-player. I always felt like this was a little better on paper than in practice. Uh, because I'm a real fan of action RPGs, especially co-op ones. I don't know. Maybe I haven't given enough a chance. And then finally, we have uh, F-Zero GX. F-Zero GX, very fine, uh, very fine racing game on the GameCube. And what's interesting about this is this game's actually made by Sega. Uh, and it's it's certainly a challenging game, but a good one. Now, truth be told. I believe of these five games, I believe the only ones that we didn't have in the hold already were TAC and um, X Men 2. Okay? I think those are the only two we did. But these other three, I mean, man, at least F Zero and, and Smash, how can you leave them behind? Uh, if anything, Christmas is coming up. Uh, if more than that, you know, we can make a little money on the side. All right, uh, so the next place I went to was, oh, actually they had, they had in, in an as-in bin, they had this guy, and I think I overpaid on it, frankly. This is an Atari flashback. This is the first one they ever made, probably the crappiest one they ever made. There's no controllers, no cords, but you know what? There's a good chance that they're all sitting in the back of the store. In, the, in like the, their, their back shelf area and I probably needed to ask because that's what happens a lot of times like they have GameCube sitting there they have PlayStation 3 sitting there but they don't have the controllers sitting there with them they're all wrapped up somewhere so there's a good chance that the controllers and, and hookups are sitting back there the games are already loaded on to this there's probably I believe around 12 games Atari games, 2600 games 7800 games um, and this was 250 I, I probably should have went lower, but she was so nice, and I already got the GameCube games, whatever. So here we go. And I'll, uh, yeah, I want to I want to see. I'm curious. Next time I'm in there, I'm a, I'm gonna bring this with, and uh, I'm gonna say, what's this? You know, do you have the controllers? All right. So anyway, so the next place I walked into, uh, this one lady was on her own, for the most part. She was the only person in the store, just me and her. And I almost had like this, you know, fresh blood feeling uh, but I went up and I said hi how you doing she's like hi what are you looking for I'm like uh, you know video games and showed me a couple things behind the counter wasn't that interested but I know there's a glass case with just piles of PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 games I asked her to unlock it went over there found some good stuff 
okay? And um, first of all, I came across about a half dozen PlayStation 1 games, and they all had this on it. Okay? 75 cents of a PlayStation 1 game. So let's take a look at what we got here. There's four of them, not six. So uh, Crash Bandicoot 2, Warped. Uh, Crash is always a pretty uh, strong game, especially on the PS1. Uh, you know, there was also this uh, Crash Bandicoot the original. Anybody remember those commercials of Crash Bandicoot back in the day when he was? Uh... <laughs> I thought I had a megaphone. I don't. Uh, he he'd be like standing outside of the Nintendo offices in the parking lot. It was like a mascot, like a guy dressed up like Crash in a, in a mascot suit, and he'd be standing outside. The t he'd be like Nintendo headquarters would be out there. He'd be like, he'd have a megaphone. He'd be like, "Hey, Nintendo, you suck!" or something like that. Or you know, you, can you do polygon graphics? You know, whatever. He'd be screaming. Or all those weird commercials back in the back in the sludge days of you know slinging mud at other video game companies. Uh, so anyway, Crash Bandicoot the original. This today. This game is still sought after, still in demand, and at 75 cents is, is a really good deal. And it is complete, as you can plainly see. Uh, the disc is in there, and in good shape. Uh, next, for 75 cents, couldn't pack it up. Couldn't pass it up. Uh, Underground Jam Pack, a demo disc. It, it retailed for five bucks. See that? Yeah. Got all the way to 75. Only had to wait 15 years, right? Uh, so yeah, disc, you know, whatever. And what's on here? Spyro the Dragon demo, uh, Medieval demo, Metal Gear Solid demo, a Bugs Life demo, and that's probably the worst one. Cool Borders 3 demo, NHL Face Off, uh, Strike That, NHL Face Off is worse than Bug, Bug Life. NFL Game Day, Strike That, that's worse than NHL Face Off. Uh, Rally Cross 2. Tomb Raider 3, The Adventures of Lara Croft, and finally, uh, Small Soldiers. A movie I never saw, it says here, you know, some other stuff, some downloadable codes. Not bad. You know, th these demo discs, this is, this is a time gone by. And I think that we, we lost something when we moved from downloadable, from physical copy demos to downloadable demos. Because uh, there's something about having a demo disc and really nothing else. I remember I was in college, and uh, my roommate at the time, Tyson, he had a PlayStation. We didn't have any games for it, but somehow I had come across a demo disc. I think I'd bought a magazine, because at the time they had magazines where you would, if you bought a magazine for about 10 bucks, it came with a demo disc with some demos on it. So I had bought that magazine. <laughs> Didn't have any money. We, you know, we were in college. And that thing had like Spider-Man on it. And it had like Twisted Metal 4. Probably one of the worst Twisted Metals. Uh, you know, some other games. I don't remember what else was on there. But God, I remember playing that demo disc. Over and over and over. And like, you know, playing the different games. And, and, and fi finishing the demo back to front as much as you possibly could. Uh, and it was a great time, you know, it's something about, it's it's like being stuck on a desert island with one of these, you know, and you're scraping and scrounging around with it for every resource you can get a hold of, uh, and cherishing every bit of it. So, <laughs> so these are fun. Um, it'd be interesting to do a demo disc here on uh, the Gallium sometime. Okay, uh, and then finally... Again, for 75 cents, this is really cool because this is nowhere in the hold on any platform. I think if this was only on PlayStation and N64. And it's uh, Mortal Kombat Mythologies Sub-Zero. Okay, if you don't know what this is, this is literally a 2D platformer of sorts starring Sub-Zero using the old Mortal Kombat engine. So imagine that. They built an entire platformer based around you know, a pretty shoddy fighting game to begin with. I don't know that this game's any good. It's usually not considered very good, but it's always been on my list, uh, specifically for N64, but I'll take the PlayStation version. 
just fine, especially for 75. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, I really shouldn't be. Hold on. Get all this stuff back in the table. I'm going to keep it all together so we can put it back in the box later. Okay, so, as I said, this cabinet had PlayStation 3 games, and that was my modus operandi for going over there in the first place. I was lucky to find a PlayStation 1 game. I was quite happy to find them, but, you know, let's get into the meat of it. So I started looking at some games. A couple of them caught my eye, but these days we're usually looking around 5 bucks a PS3 game, and, I, you know, if, if we're in the age right now where we're spending a dollar on PlayStation 2 games... The day is going to come where we're spending a dollar for PlayStation 3 games. The question is, are you patient enough to wait for that day? I tend to be. So, but I did ask. She seemed like a pretty amiable lady. And I said, you know, what are you doing in PlayStation 3 games? And there was like a big stack. Uh, and she's like, I don't know, somewhere around two bucks each. Two bucks each. Two bucks each for PlayStation 3 games. Not bad. So I pulled some. And here we are. Let's take a look. Uh, Dynasty Warriors 7. I'm not a Dynasty Warriors fan, but if they're cheap, I'll pick them up because they're action-packed and they're multiplayer. Um, historical Chinese uh, figures cutting down hundreds and hundreds of feudal Japanese soldiers. There you go. I believe, that obviously, this is PS3, so, you know, uh, of course it's online. What isn't? Um, Army of Two. The Devil's Cartel. It's, uh, this is designed to be a, a split screen, sit on the couch with your buddy doing, you know, playing pocket pool, co-op game. I'm a sucker for co-op games. I'm not a sucker for paying, uh, retail for what is probably a relatively forgettable shooter, but two bucks, I'm in. Metal Gear Rising, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Metal Gear Rising, Revengeance. You play that guy that you probably can't even see very well. There he is. That's Raiden. Um, I know the weirdest thing about this game is he, this guy uses a katana, uh, but sometimes he he sticks it on his foot. Can I do it? Ah! No, I can't do it. I look like a sumo wrestler. Um, he sticks the sword on his foot, and then he's slashing people like that. I kind of signed out of the Metal Gear si uh, series. After the second one, uh, the first one was great. The second one was fun, but not, you know, kind of a letdown. And then I just, after that, I was kind of done. The only reason I got this is I've kind of made it a mini goal to collect a copy of every, a physical copy of every game that was featured in PlayStation Battle Royale. If you don't know what that is, PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. That was a PlayStation 3 game that was basically cap trying to capitalize on the Smash Brothers popularity. Smash Brothers obviously is uh, starring Nintendo characters. Sony tried to get on board, make one of their own, and uh, they had some questionable rosters to say the least, uh, entries into the roster to say the least, and Raiden being one of them. Riding uh, in the game was, was really unbalanced, really easy to use. Maybe they fixed that in updates. But I did like the game enough to appreciate the roster, and so it's kind of been my goal to get a physical copy of every game that, that, had, that had a character in that game. I don't know how many I have. Who knows? But uh, Riding's on there, so this had to be on the list. But I'll never play this. Never. Two dollars. Probably should have waited for it to be one dollar. Okay, this one I'll probably this uh, this one I'll definitely play. Uh, Tomb Raider, a game, a series that I used to uh, just lambast for years and years, especially during the PS1 days. I think thought it looked terrible. Uh, try and argue with me on that. I mean, it's early polygon, you know, early polygonal graphics, that has never aged well. Um, but this Tomb Raider was remade from the ground up. Uh, looks a lot like Uncharted. I'm a big fan of Uncharted for the PlayStation 3. This guy, this guy looks great. Um, I've been holding out for the Game of the Year edition. You know, I like all the Tomb Raider, all the stuff, uh, DLC on the disc. But man, for two bucks, two bucks for a game you really want to play, 
DLC or not. It's not like I'm a completist, dude. You know, I think I'll be okay. So this is a cool deal. I'm excited about that. Also excited about this. I'm probably going to keep this right at Port Bismuth because uh, me and Patty the Swallow play a lot of fighting games. And this is one I can definitely take him on. Uh, Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition. This was the second to last of the series. So this one's a little obsolete. Uh, but again, for two bucks, great deal. Great deal. GTA 5. That's right, GTA 5. These things are starting to be all over the place. Two bucks. Uh, this is hands down the most beat up copy of all of them uh, in this lot. And certainly, I mean... <laughs> One of those beat up 360 games I've ever come across. Uh, 360. PS3 games. This guy's probably going to get sold. I'm probably going to sell this guy uh, to recoup some of the money here. Because we already have a copy in the hold, and it looks a hell of a lot better than this. You know, so there you go. Uh, God of War Saga. God of War Saga, two bucks. Five, uh, as you can see there. It's a compilation disc, five full uh, God of War games we have, all remastered in HD. God of War, the original, God of War 2, God of War 3, and then uh, God of War Chains of Olympus and God of War Ghost of Sparta. So I think 1 and 2 was on the PlayStation 2, 3 was on the PlayStation 3, and then Chains of Olympus and Ghost of Sparta were on the PSP. This could be every God of War that's come out, but don't quote me. It's also got some exclusive bonus content, whatever that is. So that's pretty cool. Not a bad deal. Uh, Watch Dogs. Yeah, this game's $2 these days, guys. Man, were you guys excited about this one? Yeah, that's what happens when you anticipate games that are an outlet. Yeah. For those of you, like myself, who don't know, don't care, or not invested, I believe you're supposed to play a hacker. Uh, and you're supposed to be, be able to manipulate all the technology around you in uh, usual Ubisoft fashion. This game disappointed. It did not kind of deliver what it promised. Um, looks like there's a season pass here, so if I want to play this... I just want to see what's in this. You never know what's in these manuals these days there could be codes I don't know it's just something here about the season pass oh order now okay so I have to buy or I have to buy the season pass obviously I just wonder if it came with this and, and was used it's not uh, so who cares really I can't feel I can't say I'm very excited about it. this game crashed and burned it was so anticipated and now it's going for two dollars and it's going for close to that online in fact most of these games now PlayStation 3 they're really not worth that much anymore. Uh, if you're going to go online, I, I'm saying I'd say on average of all the games we've, we've got here, I spent maybe a fourth or a fifth of what they're they're worth. If you were to walk into a store or if you were to you know hit a, an online um, shopping site. So, whoa! <laughs> I think I just heard a serpent like go up against the ship. Are we way over? We're way over. Okay. Um, what we got here? Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Fate of Two Worlds. Uh, the first one they ever made. Obsolete. But not so obsolete that we can't have fun with it. Uh, me and Patty uh, keep this over at Port Bismuth so we don't have to do a lot of traveling. Uh, we don't have to pull it from the hold to bring it over to the, to, uh, the headquarters. It'll stay there. And then finally, how can you say no to the old Sonic Ultimate Genesis Collection. One of the greatest compilations in history. Uh, I don't know how many Sega, Sega Genesis games are on here, but it's a lot, and they're representing every genre right here, from arcade to platformer to beat em up to hundreds and hundreds of hour RPG fun. So that's it. Uh, we have, put that anywhere, Raz. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten PlayStation 3 games. And then the four PlayStation 1 games. Why are there only three here? There were four. You saw four, right? 
Here it is, the demo disc. I'll sub zero. Ten PlayStation Three games, four PlayStation One games. Uh, I, I bought the PlayStation Three games for for two bucks each. These were gonna be seventy five cents each, the PlayStation One games, but she just threw them in. So this was about twenty bucks. Okay, so twenty on on the PlayStation Three, and PlayStation One games, five on the GameCube games, two fifty on the Atari Flashback. So not a bad deal. Uh, I'll probably, as I said, end up selling Grand Theft Auto Five. It's so beat up, so common, but still in demand, and enough to give us all this at uh, probably about ninety percent, uh, and you know, recoup about ninety percent of what we spent. That's pretty good. So that's it. Let's get back to Strikers. Uh, way over in time, but uh, that's okay. We don't have much left to do here. Let's blow up a couple more uh, planes. Um, maybe we'll get to the flying pancake. Uh, more on that later. Uh, but let's get back to it. Strikers 1945, PlayStation 1. PlayStation 1. Okay. Silence. 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 Oh, it's not silent. Silence for me. Okay, let's go! Somebody watch the time, because I'm going to get... I'm gonna get the bloodlust going, it's gonna be 45 minutes. God, is that thing not dead yet? Oh my god. that sound when you uh, oh, when you power up the, the plane sounds a lot like uh, sounds a lot like I'm pulling a katana out of my pants or something that probably didn't sound right but sorry you know what I'm saying oh that left a mark yeah, look, the water's coming out. That was awesome. It's like a dam. Oh, go get him, boys! Oh, this isn't good. I wonder how many of these continues we get. Endless loop, really? Shoot. I don't think I'm going to make it. You think I can beat that guy? So I guess this is endless continues. That's what it looks like to me. so good too. I want to beat one more boss before we skip. Beat or fail, we'll see. I bet you guys can hear me like totally going crazy on the, on the joystick. You know, we're using the big stick. Big stick out, baby, and you know, anyone who can find one of these, now pick it up. Even if you're not a fighting game fan, for games like this, it's so much more entertaining. So much more authentic. I think the boys attack. Oh, wrong button. I was trying to pull out the big guns there. I think the boys at Tappers were impressed that we had, you know, a stick here in house. Obviously, it's not to the level they have. You know, they're badasses. We're, we're small guys in the pond. Oh, God. No, 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 no. Oh, God. I have one more life. I think I might have him. 
Go get him, boys! Oh, we got him. Alright, I don't think I'm gonna last. I may want to do one more life here. I'm no badass at this, by the way. I did put this on easy. I usually don't play on easy. I'll usually stick with whatever's defaulted. I usually play normal, but this being a, a, a live show, I didn't want you guys to have to sit there and watch me struggle with the first two levels over and over and over. I mean, what's the fun in that? Oh, I was out of power. We'll go one more time, and then we'll wrap. Do the best we can here. Do it for America! Go get him! Oh man! Oh jeez! That's too big. Uh, ah! What is that? Jeez! No! One bullet? Come on, man. Come on, man. I've got two more reinforcements. Bring in the big one. Oh! No! Oh my god, there's more? Oh. Please, God, no. Stop putting him together! Oh, Jesus. Uh, okay, I'm gonna follow up with the secondary. Shoot it down his throat! Oh, man! That's war. That's what happens in war. That's why you never play war, kids, okay? Don't ever go to war. Take it from me. Okay, well, that was Strikers 1945. I know we didn't get to play too much, uh, but, you know, we've had a lot to talk about, a lot to go over in the booty segment. Ha! Huh, what a shame that we have stuff to go through in the booty segment. Uh, but Strikers 45, it's a game that's pretty much a one-trick pony you're shooting and you're shooting and you're shooting and you're shooting and then you take the game out and then you put it in a week later and you're shooting 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 it is an amazing game it may be a, a one trick pony but that's one hell of a trick it pulls off okay all right mailbag segment there it is let's see what we got in here today Whoa, 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 watch it. Watch it. Okay. Oh, you know what? Let me tell you this. Uh, I, uh, again, all that stuff I got in an hour from the booty segment, sorry to come back to this out of order, but uh, we we played, um, I stopped at, uh, at Starbucks, the drive-thru, uh, once I was done, and they had uh, iced coffee. Uh, they said, it, you know, I don't know what it was, but anyway, it was like iced coffee. This is kind I never had before. Said a lady, let me get a medium of that. She's like, a grande? And I'm like, yeah, of course, it's a, sure. You know, a medium, a grande, sure. She uh, she says, okay, what would you like in it, sir? I'm like, well, what do you want? What do you usually get? 
That's usually what I do. I, I like to find out what they want. You know, they're the barista. What do I know? She's like, well, I usually have a plane. I'm like, okay, why don't you give it to me like that? So we go over to the, uh, I go over to the window to pay. They hand me the drink, so, some other dude. And he's like, here you go. Uh, it's on her. She comped you. And it's still delicious hours later. So uh, random Starbucks barista. Thank you for that. You ended uh, quite a, a lucrative hour on a very high lucrative note. Okay, now for the mailbag segment. Let's see what we got here today. Some scissors. Uh, Shadow Dancer for the Sega Genesis. A couple of bills here. Lighter. Chicago Blackhawks lighter. I got it all right here. Uh, rubber band. Ball full of rubber bands. Rubber band ball. Uh, we got a Pokemon card here. Imposter Oaks Revenge. Look out for the Imposter Oaks. Screwdriver. Finally. Is this the mail? No. Here we go. That was an old mail. This is also an old mail. This is not. Okay, sorry about that. I'm going to clean this bag up. So this is from Admiral Will himself. And he says, uh, Captain Raz, do you have any nemeses? Well, I mean, I see where he's going, you know. I am the captain of a pirate ship. A pirate ship that sails the sea with some of the greatest games you could ever find in video game history. So, chances are there's probably a couple guys, you know, on my trail. But for the most part, I would say, uh, I'd say I'm pretty nice to everybody. Uh, I, I do have a problem with uh, uh, people who go into um, used video game places uh, looking for video games and they don't play them. You know, it's one thing to look for video games and, and collect them and to sell some of them to recoup the cost. It's another one to just flat out sell them all and not know anything about it. I mean, I've walked into video game stores. Video game stores. Where the place is literally stacked. It's a mom and pop scenario. There's games everywhere. They're all eBay prices. And I asked the proprietor, so what's your favorite game? She's like, I don't play. That bothers me. Okay. I don't know what to say. And I also have a problem with uh, chicks who, uh, they, they, they start dating a guy like, you know, say uh, the guy is in a um, I don't know alternative music and wearing like flannels and stuff she starts dating him and then all of a sudden she's wearing flannels and listen alternative music and then you know maybe they break up and I don't know she goes to the next guy and the guy's I don't know uh, wearing a, you know a cowboy hat maybe he's in a country or something and then she starts you know wearing like uh, Daisy Dukes and, and listen to, to, to western music I hate that God, that bothers me. I guess I guess that, that's not just chicks. I know, uh, but you know, I'm a guy, so obviously it's gonna be a chick. But I, I I don't know what that's called when when people do that. You know, stick to your own personality. Jeez, why why do you have to leech off you know whoever you're with? So no real de nemesis. I guess those are just a couple pet peeves of mine. Uh, thank you for the question, Admiral. Uh, if you would like to send a question or some iced coffee here to uh, the Gaming Galleon. Uh, you can send it to GammonGallion at gmail.com. Uh, you can tweet it to yesterday night or at yesterday night L. And finally, uh, you can send it, a, put it a, as a message, you know, whatever comment to any of our videos or streams uh, here at yesterday night live. And uh, man, I will get back to you. I'll tell you what, my bag's looking a little thin. This may be your chance, okay? Keep that in mind. So thanks for coming. Uh, you know we killed a lot of uh, we killed a lot of uh, axes. Is that? I don't think it's Nazis. I think that's all over. But we killed a lot of bad guys, and uh, we found a lot of cool loot. Found a lot of cool loot, and uh, we had a lot of fun. And frankly, uh, because this show was put together so crazily. In the past 24 hours, we got a whole other adventure lined up, ready to go, plotted out in the Navigator for next week. So we certainly will be back at that time. Don't sweat it, okay? 
So, man, hang around. Uh, try and do whatever you have to do to survive the next seven weeks, seven days. And uh, until then, our well and adieu to ye Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu, ye ladies of Spain. For we received orders for to fly back to Berlin. And we may never see ye fair ladies again. God bless you, dear sweet barista. Keep your powder dry, matey.